control statement switch case up till now we have studied about all the loops in java and this is the last loop which we are going to study that is a switch case now java switch statement is like a conditional statement which test multiple values and gives one output now these multiple values which values we give for checking in that particular loop or in the switch case these multiple values are actually called cases in java or particularly in switch case these multiple values are tested and that's why they are called cases it is like a multi branch statement that there can be n number of cases in a program case 1 case 2 and it goes on checking now after the release of java 7 we can even use string in the cases that means it's not necessary that we have to pass the integer value only for checking we can use the string values also now the syntax for the switch case in java is you have to use the keyword switch and then you have to mention the expression here that what is expression in which you are checking beginning of the loop or the cases then you have to use the case value value could be one or any particular value which you are giving then a statement executes and then you have to use the break statement now what is the use of this break statement if checking a particular value and the value currently matches with the expression which needs to be checked then why to check for all the particular value when it is getting matched so this break statement automatically terminates from the loop and comes to the end of the loop by printing the values that is a use of this break statement now there are certain rules which you need to keep in mind while running a switch case or running a switch case program that there cannot be any duplicate cases duplicate cases cannot be there otherwise it will show you an error because there cannot exist two same cases the value in the case and the data type of the variable in the switch case must be same that means if you are using the integer i and then giving in the case suppose case is a case 2 is b then that is not acceptable because the variable or the data type which you given is integer so you cannot create such cases for that you have to use the string data type next is the break statement fulfills the purpose of terminating the sequence of execution so break statement is necessary in the switch case for terminating the sequence now it is not necessary to include the break statement the execution will move to the next statement if the break statement is missing so it will keep on checking all the values then it will return you the values it will not generate an error but for a good programming concept and logic we use the break statement now at last after the, all the cases are given we use a default case what if the user or what if the condition we have mentioned in the program doesn't exist then that is done in the default case and with the help of sop statement we can print that it is either invalid or it is default so that is at the last but you can appear it at any place of your programming logic so the flow chart or the basic representation of how it goes is now what i have declared you here expression is checked with the case one if it is true then it gets printed then the break statement executes and it automatically comes out of the switch case or that particular loop or else it will check for case 2 case 3 and so on for example if we want to make a program for the days of week for example what i am doing is firstly i am initializing a value let's say int a and in that particular or we say int day we are initializing a particular variable and in that i am giving 5 as the value i am checking for this expression int day 5 next what we are doing we are checking with the help of switch case so in switch we are going to mention this particular expression that is for day beginning of the case first case what will be first case if it matches the case value as 1 then what it is going to print sop statement it is going to print that the day is monday now the value here is 5 so i guess this value printed for the case 5 when it will check the case will be 5 and in the sop statement the value will be friday so it will print that the day 5 which you have mentioned is actually friday so it will print that particular statement and then it will execute the break loop and come out that means it will not check for saturday sunday or the invalid case this is how the switch case actually execute now let us execute this program also so that you can get a more clear picture of switch case now here you can see i have written the same code which i have explained that i have initialized this as day 5 and then i have mentioned several cases with the help of break statement now if i run this particular code 
and the day is 5 so it is going to display me here you can see that that the day is Friday here you can see in the default we have mentioned the invalid case that means if there the case is apart from 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 if I mention any such day for example if I am mentioning the day as 11 I save this code and then I run this particular code so obviously it will display me that that is an invalid case there are no such 11th day of any particular week so it is an invalid case you can also change it from here also if you mention here that if you want to check for the second day of the week which is the second day of the week and you again save this particular code and run it so here you can see that it is a Tuesday so this is how cases run that means after checking the Tuesday the break statement and executed that means it automatically comes out of the loop it doesn't checks for further because we know that in switch case we cannot give any duplicate cases or any duplicate values of cases so that's how it is done now this is particularly of integer data type you can make of other data types also for example you can make of string also how here you have to declare a string variable string str let's say and then you have to mention the day in the string format and you have to create the cases according to that and then print the day that it is the first day second day third day or fifth day so that is how you can do with the string cases also or else you can do with other cases also you can make other programs for example you create a string player and make it as a batsman now you can create a first case batsman then it will print that batsmen are player who actually bats bowlers are who actually bowls wicket keeper is actually who keeps the wicket so this is how you can print it with the help of string cases also which is done and helpful after the release of java 7 version so which you can do in your version also you can check for string cases also how can you check for string cases you have to just make a certain amount of change for example just the program which i just said so what you have to do in that you have to just write string create an s variable and name that case particularly you're checking for for example batsman you're checking okay and then if you're checking for batsman or batsman then what will happen you will create that particular case for player or if you will uh, you can also create for s also so switch s this is the case which you created okay so then the case begins and in first case what you're going to write always use quotes because it's a string first case only you create of a batsman and then you can use the sop statement and write about what a batsman does case 2 you can also create for a bowler or what he does so this is how you can use for string in switch cases also so by the end of this video we have covered all the loops in java and for more concepts of java we will look into upcoming videos